does low testosterone cause anemia? And if it does, does getting on TRT, does it quote unquote fix that anemia? I want to talk about the implications of TRT and anemias. So one thing we definitely know is that guys with hypogonadism, especially hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism, they oftentimes do have anemia. And when you get them on TRT, it typically resolves and their CBC goes back to normal. This is one of the principal reasons why elderly patients, elderly men typically have some form or some degree of anemia, albeit even if it's mild. So to further expound on this, if you, if you observe guys who have hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism, oftentimes they'll also have decreased expression of ferroportin and hepcidin. Now, ferroportin, ferroportin is a protein that essentially traffics iron that's absorbed in your GI tract throughout the body. So say you eat a big meal, it's high in iron. What ferroportin does is it takes that iron that you've absorbed in your GI tract and essentially it's like a, like a vehicle. It takes it wherever it needs to go throughout your body. Now, hepcidin, on the other hand, pumps the brakes on ferroportin's trafficking ability. So it essentially it mediates the ability of ferroportin to deliver iron throughout the body. Here's where testosterone comes into play. Testosterone suppresses the functions of hepcidin. So essentially testosterone stops hepcidin from pumping the brakes on ferroportin from trafficking iron throughout your body. The second key point of the testosterone iron relationship is testosterone's relationship with EPO, aka erythropoietin. So testosterone stimulates EPO production from the kidneys. And from there, EPO tells the bones to make red blood cells. Now, this typically works in a negative feedback fashion, meaning testosterone will tell the bones make red blood cells. But when it hits your, your body's own set point, whatever that may be, my set point it could be 52, yours could be 55, we don't know. But when it hits your body's set point, EPA should pump the brakes in a negative feedback negative feedback manner. Here's the thing though, when you're on TRT, when you're on exogenous testosterone, that negative feedback mechanism, it doesn't, doesn't quite get shut down like it should. In fact, the literature shows that your RBC to erythropoietin, your homeostatic set point would actually be higher when you're on TRT than if you weren't on TRT. What's interesting is that anabolic hormones that have greater anabolic to androgenic profiles have greater degrees of EPO production. So for instance, nandrolone. Nandrolone has an anabolic to androgenic ratio of roughly 10 to 1, 11 to 1. And therefore, it's going to have a greater influence on the amount of EPO produced in the kidneys. And therefore, hormones like nandrolone are going to have greater influences on possibly driving up erythrocytosis higher than testosterone would. So this makes a great segue to the last point I want to talk about is that testosterone also increases iron utilization for erythropoiesis. And erythropoiesis is just a nice medical word for saying make more red blood cells. Okay. So you remember a minute ago, I said that testosterone suppresses hepcidin and hepcidin is what's going to allow or prohibit ferroportin from transporting iron throughout the body. So by suppressing hepcidin, ferroportin is going to be able to pull more iron from your gut and therefore transport it throughout your body. And this process happens because you're making more red blood cells. And if you're making more red blood cells, guess what? You're also making more hemoglobin. And it's speculated that about 60 to 70% of your total body's iron is utilized in the production of hemoglobin. So your ferritin levels go down because you're actively tapping into them to support the increased demand of red blood cell and hemoglobin production. One of the big things we see is that once guys get on TRT, both their hepcidin levels fall and both their ferritin levels fall. But what's interesting is that if they were to come off TRT, then both levels would go back to normal. What this tells us is that testosterone was suppressing hepcidin because ferroportin was tapping into more ferritin, which is your storage form of iron, in an effort to support more red blood cell production. Long story short, testosterone suppresses hepcidin. Therefore, ferroportin is able to traffic more iron throughout circulation. 